In the previous lesson, we saw how we can use the tracker to follow particular parts in our video that are easily recognizable by the Natron software. And we uh, do some example about using a tracker. In this case, I've used the tracker with a blur uh, rectangle so that it can blur only part of the footage, like the face of the character right here. And this is, again, just a, a simple uh, example of what we can do with trackers. Now, in this video, we're going to continue to talk about transform nodes. And in particular, we're going to have a look to the 3D card and how we can deform using the corner pins. And also, how we can do tracking and stabilizing and how we can use the corner pins to do uh, video montage of something that is not just moving, but it's like um, getting far or getting near or it's rotating in 3D. So I'm going to start with the card 3D node here and we're going to see what we can do with this. Actually, it's really simple. We can just deform, but following like 3D perspective rules. So I'm going to use a simple rectangle here. I'm going to create a simple rectangle and I'm going to plug it in the card 3D just to show you that it's a really, really easy concept. So if I click and drag here, I can resize the rectangle and start to deform, transform the rectangle. If I use car 3D, I'm going to go for the parametric panel here and uh, various parameters. So if I start to translate, it's going to move, but it's not going to move like um, in a standard way. Or if I rotate, it's not going to rotate. Well, in the Z axis, it's going to rotate kind of 2D because the Z axis is like pointing our way. So it's um, the depth. But if I start to rotate it using like the epsilon and the x, you will see the actual 3D effect. So if I start to rotate the, ep the epsilon, you can see that it's rotating on a vertical axis. But in this case, in 3D, it's not rotating 2D. So it's kind of a fake 3D in a way, but it is moving in the 3D space. And it's going to do that also if I translate and et cetera, et cetera. So 3D card basically will create a 3D perspective look to whatever you're going to plug inside that node. Now, we can also do a similar effect using corner pins. But this is kind of going through the parameters. With the corner pins, we're going to do that using the view. And here, I can still work on the rectal, for example. So if I want to simulate kind of a screen, TV screen, or like a billboard, a missing billboard, I can create some emissive effect with this. And uh, I'm just going to drag and drop here an image and show you also uh, another way we can use 3D deformation. So basically, I can change the source and I can use car 3D and it immediately uses the same deformation applied to the image or a video. So in Natron, doesn't really make uh, a difference if you use a video, um, a shape, or a, an image. You can do usually everything you do with the image. You can do it with the video, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And again, we can change the scale. So it looks like the camera. It's like we're working with a camera going back and forward. And there are also like more advanced features with the car 3D. So this is just you know scratching the surface. Now I want to merge the two. So Maybe I can try to create that emissive effect. And usually, you know, the, the merge node, it's um, basically everywhere. So I'm going to you know, enlarge the rectangle a little bit so we can see now it's kind of a glowing effect or something. So then we can start to do a little bit of montage and uh, overlapping things with the merge node. And that's also what we're going to see next. So card 3D is uh, one of the other transform nodes. And then we have corner pins. And just going to get rid of the 3D card because it's better to see this isolated. Now, it's better if you select the source and then create a corner pin so that the corner pins, they go directly on the edges of your um, footage, whatever it is. So if I go here now and create again the corner pins with the corner pin node, now we can see the corner pin are on the various corners. And once we have that, now nothing is happening because we are not modified anything. We didn't deform, we didn't transform anything. 
So we can go directly in the parameters. We can see the two parameters. So it's, it's going to change according to what I set in here. I can also enable and disable. So if I move this to 4, you can see it changed the coordinates. So it goes to those new coordinates. So it goes from uh, the original and then to those new coordinates. So if I want, I can simulate the 3D perspective myself manually, not using 3D card parameters, but just going here and setting these four points. And that's going to create a perspective effect, which is um, something I probably want to do if I, if I use corner prints or you know, similar. Now, if I want to do a photo montage, this is going to be our A node. So it's going to be on the front. And then we need a background. So let's start with kind of a screen or uh, billboard or something. You know, there are so many ways you can do this. You can use smartphones or whatever. And you can use green screen as well. Now, I want to use a dark TV screen dark. I want to use a dark scene with the TV screen so I can simulate that glowing effect also around the image. So I can take this, for example. Let me get this one here. So just to quickly show that when we have a picture, we can, I'm just going to download this small. You can see the author on the top left. You can say thanks. You can donate. You can follow. Etc. Etc. So this comes from Unsplash, which is another website where we can get free stuff. So um, if I have an image on the background like this, I can easily simulate a perspective insertion. I can insert the image and then modify. Now what happened here is that background image is pretty small. So we're going to use some other transformer we already saw, like reformat or crop or resize. They all can change the, the dimensions and the proportions. So I'm going to go use reformat and drop in this um, uh, source here. And I'm going to change. You have many options. You can make two bucks. You can set up your customized size or you can just choose two project format. So you're going to use the the Dynatron project format, which right now is full HD, so it's, it's going to be fine. What I'm going to do is just reduce the size of the image on the top or on the foreground. And now all I need to do is just point those corners and use the corner pin essentially to simulate using the, the image that's on the background. Now it's pretty difficult to see the image on the background uh, for two reasons. The first one, because we have a totally opaque image on the top. The second, because we have those black uh, edges, which are due to the alpha channel. So all I'm going to do here is go to the merge node. And we can adjust the mix so we can see a little bit of what's behind. And that's going to help us placing the points. And then we're going to get rid of the extra black parts. Now we have some puppets there in front of the screen there that needs to be cut out with a roto scoping a node or something that we already saw before. So uh, just remember, you can create more advanced photo uh, montages and video montages using the roto scoping as we already know. So all I'm going to do is do this simple insertion like this. Now we still can see the black parts. So I'm going to select the source, which is the read one in my case, and I'm going to adjust the output components in the read panel here. Output components, put RGBA, and that's going to use an alpha channel. And there you go. So we have this really simple photo montage, photo insertion. Now we're going to make things a little bit more complex with videos. But before we jump into video montage, I want to show you a really interesting feature that we find again in the transform section. Now I want to show you this video that I'm going to use. You can see it's pretty unstable. It's uh, moving because it's a non-professional uh, shot and uh, there is a lot of wind in there. So the, the camera is shaking, it's moving, it's trembling and not working really good. So if we want to stabilize that, we have a really handy feature in the tracker that is going to help us and it's really easy to use. So if I press play, 
I can see this is the, let's say, non-professional footage with the unstable recording. And now I'm gonna go again in transform node, use the tracker again. And this time in the tracker, we're going to use another feature. So um, select the tracker and add a track. And now we need to spot like we did before, something that is always visible in this recording and it's not going to disappear. So like this little pretty recognizable peak uh, in a iceberg here. So that's going to be fine. Remember to use something that is always visible and that can be tracked all over, all the way to the end. Now you can also make the footage a little bit smaller with the out point if it's too long. Just, just to show you the, the tracker. So I point the tracker in there. I can also create more trackers. Now, if the image is kind of rotating a little bit or maybe it's zooming also in and out. So you can't only use one tracker, you need to use more. So if you wanna track just the movement, one tracker will be fine. If you wanna track rotation and um, uh, size, change of the size, etc. So if you want to do this, you need more tracker and you need to select here that you want to track more stuff. So uh, you can add here and also you can review the various trackers that you put in there. So you use trans rotation and scale and then you can go and track. So you press play, track everything. And that's it. Now, before we track, there you go. So we can track forward, track backward, et cetera, et cetera. Before we track, you, may, you wanna make sure that you select this stabilize or stabilizer. So you can see now this tracking there, the movement, basically. But also, I don't think there are rotation in here or changing of this, the scale but if you want to track them, you can do it. So this is the simple tracker, but here, if you want to use the stabilizer, you go here and use stabilize and then use transform. So first, first of all, give it a go with the, with the tracker and then you can do stabilize transform and then export the data. So when you export the data, you're gonna find a new transform node so I'm just gonna create a copy of that read. So I'm gonna Control C, Control V. And now I'm gonna use that inside the transform node I have exported from the tracker. And now what we see here is going to be the, the final result. So if I press play, we can see now that, there you go. Now this is moving. If you look carefully, it looks like the image is moving around. Well, that's moving because it's trying to keep that point that we define with the tracker still. And to do that, it's basically moving and adjusting the image. Sometimes it's pretty difficult to see if the image is not so unstable, but if it's pretty unstable, it's gonna be more visible. But I guarantee if you press play, you will see it so you can make a test. Now, in order to remove the extra black parts that will eventually generate, I can do a resize, I can do a crop. Again, I can use you know some other transform. I just wanna do resize for this. So I'm just gonna make this a little bit smaller. So using here the size, I can use the, the size, the format, I can use the scale. So I'm, I make this a little bit bigger so that the original frame will be a little bit smaller than the actual video so that parts of that video will be cropped out and I'm going to give it a try by using now a writer node so I can check if everything is fine. So you can also use reformat to make it fit into the project format again and you know there are so many nodes we already saw previously in the video course. I think this will be fine. You can see now 
already that it's really, really stable if we compare it to the, to the previous one. But to make the final test, I'm just going to write everything and look what's going to happen. So I set the scale here 1.1. And then in the right, I'm going to choose a part and export the stabilized footage. So I'm going to just use the my Natron course folder and I'm going to call this uh, export. Let's call this test stabilize and format will be in video. So choose video format. I'm going to go for MP4 and there we go. Just going to remove this little hashtag sign there. Save it. And we'll go check what's going to happen. So once you finish to render out, there you go. It's running now. It's running the process. You go and check in the folder. And this, this is the new one. So you can see it's really, really stable. Not perfectly stable, but pretty, pretty close. And I think that's, that's going to be fine if you want to adjust your, your footage. I think it's a really wonderful tool and feature of the tracker. Now I want to use a video to do a video montage. So I want to place a video inside another video, like a billboard or a TV screen, something that is moving, something that is not still, like a photo. And usually the best thing is to use this green screen like this with the tracker. Uh, you can see those crosshairs inside. Those are points that can be easily tracked. Now, if you don't have anything like that, don't worry. Well, you have some professional video available, like in Pexels or also in other websites. But I'm, I'm going to use this, which is going to be fine because this is a billboard, contains a lot of tracking points that we can get. But the best option, as I said, is to, be, is to have the, the green screen and to have really defined trackers inside. So um, you can see also that this is not only moving, it's also uh, moving like rotating. And also this one here is, they are kind of, uh, it's not a simple movement. There is rotation in here. There is uh, also the, uh, the, the movement, the, the, the standard movement, and also the resize or, you know, the getting near, getting far of the camera. So this will be more complex to track, but we can use corner points or corner pins or corner trackers. So I'm going to close everything. And this is the final result just to show you. You can see there that if I move that video that we just stabilized, this is the video we already exported. It's a little bit squashed, but we can work on that again using the, the, the resize or reformat, etc. But those are the four points in there. So we have the four corner pins and here also the four other corner pins that have been tracked using the tracker. And there is a perfect, well, not perfect, but really nice video montage of something that is, uh, is not in the billboard. We, are, we, we put that in there. So uh, let's see how it's going to work out. So I'm going to create a new project. Start from the beginning because you need to be careful on some steps. I'm going to drop in my background and I'm going to drop in my foreground video. There we go. And I will check with the viewer. I also want to create a new viewer, sorry, from here and there you go. So we can plug these two separately and we can see what's happening separately. So on the first one here, we're going to track four points. And those four points will be on the billboard. And on the first one, on the one on the top, instead, we're going to create four corner pins. So uh, you need to start from the bottom left and then bottom right and then top right and top left, you need to go counterclockwise in placing those corner pins because 
This is how corner pins work. We saw it before. So this one is the, the foreground. And if I double click, and let me just create already the, the corner pins that we're gonna use later. So I'm gonna go transform, corner pin, and you can see immediately when you select the image, they will go in the corner. So two, one, two, 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 three, two, four. So now they are just there on the corners. And let's go back to this other image. So here we're gonna use the tracker. Click on the tracker node and let's start working. So now we need four trackers. The first one plus, there you go. You can create it and then you can position it. And try to put it again where there's something pretty recognizable like this edge between the yellow and the white and the black that, that's easily trackable. And you can expand a little bit the two areas, not too much so that the, the, the surrounding also will be tracked. Here in the transform generator, we're gonna do match move and transform first to track you don't want to use corner pins be careful with that you need match move and transform go to the zero also this is important every time you go back to the zero because you can see now that this is not the, the precise location we want and well let's just start again because we created kind of a movement already that has been tracked to control alt click you can also do control alt click and put directly the tracker in the exact position that you want. And here again, make sure you have match move transform, make sure you are at zero, press play, and now we're tracking. So be careful to, do, to check all these steps. Those are really important to have a good tracking of your corner, because we're not what we're doing now, we're tracking the first corner, and then we proceed counterclockwise with the second one, and then the third and the fourth. So just jump ahead a little bit. And this is the result. So you can see this little curve is the movement of that point during the footage. So you can also go back, check if everything is fine. You can also set some keyframes manually if it's not fine. If it's fine, you just proceed to the next one, which is gonna be that one. Control, Alt, click, put the tracker, get to the zero, get back to the zero frame, and then start to track. And this is going to be the second one. So you need to be patient and make sure, again, that everything is working fine. There are no gaps. There are no, like, lags or, uh, you know, strange movements. And proceed with the next one. Track three, go back to zero, record or well, track the movement of that other point. And again, I'm going to do another jump. We only, uh, and that's the, the finish one. So I, I went a little bit ahead, but you can see the four corner pins there. Those four trackers will be our four corner pins, essentially. So the corner pins of the other image. Now, what we're going to do is take this data that we created and then export it. So we, we can keep much move, but we can change now here to corner pin. Make sure these are blue. If they're not blue, there's something wrong. This needs to be blue because they, they, are, they have recorded all the different movements of those four corner pins, to one, to two, to three, to four. So make sure they are there and they are blue and then hit export. There we go. These are the four corner pins exported for us that will also be used with the other image. Now let's go back to the other image. We're going to keep this here for the moment. We're going to do a merge node with M key and we're going to use the background directly from here. We don't need the tracker for that. We just need the, the source for the background and we need the this one here. We need the corner pins here to be the, the other source. Now there is a problem with the frame rate, but I don't think it's, uh, we, we, we can fix it later. We just need to have this connection. I'm gonna unplug also this and I'm gonna bring 
the, the result of the merge into the viewer here. Double click, and this is the, the final result at the moment. So right now we have the four points. We can start moving them. So we have from and to. These are the two. This is the destination, to. This is two, three. This is two, two. This is two, one. And this is two, four. So this is why you need to create a tracker in that order and counterclockwise. I can also extend this a little bit so it's not too squashed, but I can also re resize it, change the proportions with other nodes. But anyway, this is, this is the corner pins we have. Now, what we need to do to make everything work fine is insert the exported corner pin node of the trackers inside the, the process. So let me show you. If I if you hold control, everything will turn yellow. Well, not everything, just this this little dots. Now, if you hold control and you move this node around, you can insert it between one node and the other. So what you're gonna do is put the, that corner, the second corner pin exported after the initial corner pin for the deformation, and there you go. You can see all the the process here. And press play. And now you see it, we eventually made it. So it's complex for some parts because you need to do fork tracking nodes and make sure everything is tracked correctly, etc. etc. But in the end, if you did everything right, this is the result. And it looks okay, it looks really fine. We can, of course, work with other effects post-production, blurriness of the edges, uh, resize, whatever, but you know, this is the, the base, the basic, the basic is there, so you can use it. Now this is the other footage, just want to show you this other, which is more complex because it's rotating. You can see at some point it loses the tracking, you can see there, it's losing the, the tracker, so that's a problem we need to fix manually, or we need to have a better tracking of the four points. But this is a pretty complex movement of this drone, of this footage that we we can track in the same exact way we tracked the previous one. Once it's tracked, you can also substitute the original one with a new one. So if I take a video, substitute it, it's gonna show fine. The only thing we need is to resize it because it's too big, but you can see it's moving exactly how the, the video is moving. And also here, let's put RGBA again. And you can see now that if I move the video, it's looking like a screen placed on top of that Hollywood sign mountain. And there it is. So this is how corner pins work and also more advanced um, pinning and tracking and video montage works. You can see now the trackers, where I put the trackers. So if, if it doesn't work, try it with different tracking points. Maybe they work better. And this will be all for this video guide. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please subscribe to the channel. If you want to support us, thank us, please join the channel as a supporter so we can create more videos about Natron, about similar software. And this is the images that you probably want to use like with the little crosshair that will help you to track better. So thanks again and see you in the next video.